YouTube TV is the wave of the future. It just is. For 35 bucks a month, you can get all the wonderful ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, ESPN, regional sports networks, and dozens of other popular cable networks. Awesome. I can watch shows like Empire, The Voice, The Big Bang Theory, and Scandal. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to watch any of those shows. But anyway, I decided it was a good idea to try to plug back in. AKA, start watching TV and again. In an effort to see whether I could tolerate it for longer than a minute. So I'm going to do one minute of CNN live feed. Because I figured that's probably the uh, the best news channel that represents all of TV, right? Because that's what supposedly YouTube wants to move towards. That's what everyone's fearful about. Well, I don't think it's actually possible to go back. I don't think all these people who are so used to internet content now can suddenly switch back to watching TV. And I'm going to use myself as a guinea pig in some sort of experiment for your viewing pleasure. So let's get started. And also a quick side note, I didn't actually pay for YouTube TV. I just used YouTube and searched for CNN Live and found numerous examples of blatant copyright infringement, I guess. I mean, they're just playing live TV directly. Tonight, chilling new information about Russia's attack on America. Fucking hell, we're less than 10 seconds in and CNN is already trying to paint the picture that Russia attacked America. I mean, is there some missile launch that I don't know about? Or is Red Dawn finally coming true and the entire West Coast has been taken over by the communists? Well, let's see what CNN has to say about that. According to one expert, all you have to do is follow a trail of dead Russians. Part of the problem with saying this is that CNN's own article about these eight prominent dead Russians within five months of the U.S. election, they say in their own article, self-proclaimed online sleuths and conspiracy theorists have filled the information void with speculation that the deaths were somehow related to Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election. No evidence has surfaced to make such a connection. So they have no evidence whatsoever, yet they're pushing it as if it's some sort of fact. This hour, there is new evidence that Russia is still hacking top American lawmakers, including the House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senator Marco Rubio, right now. CNN avoids most Vault 7 stuff. In fact, the only article that I could find talking about Vault 7 was on CNN Money, where they're talking specifically about hacking various devices. So this is really the only reporting that they've done on this. WikiLeaks says there's a broader security problem here, that if the CIA can get its hands on these hacking tools, then the bad guys can too. That cyber criminals, other hackers, hostile countries hacking teams will be able to hack into our phones, TVs, and computers. So if it stands to reason that absolutely anyone and their grandmother can have access to these hacking tools, then absolutely anyone and the CIA could potentially falsify where these hacking attempts are coming from. So when they say that they definitively know that there's new evidence suggesting that Russia hacked something, well, how do we know that's not just the NSA or the CIA attempting to hack Republicans? I mean, it's just as likely. In fact, they haven't provided any stretch of evidence behind, besides the word of the CIA to indicate that anything else is the case. And does anyone really trust the word of the CIA? Well, if you do, I have an Iraq war to sell you. Phil Mattingly is out front. Tonight, a stark warning that Russian meddling in this country's politics is happening right now. The takeaway from today's hearing, we're all targets of a sophisticated and capable adversary. National security expert Clint Watts warned that Russian interference was picked up just last week as the GOP health care bill collapsed. This past week, we observed social media accounts discrediting Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, hoping to further foment unrest inside U.S. democratic institutions. So of course this guy is testifying on evidence of Russian shills. And there are many different groups of shills trying to push various narratives in various directions, using bots and fake social media accounts in order to disrupt and come up with any information that happens to be possible for one end or another. Now you got CNN who's working with the CIA specifically. So what, is that Am Americans doing it's okay? If you do a Twitter audit on CNN, you will find that 46% of their followers are fake. There was a study done back in 2012 that said over half, or 51%, of internet traffic is all bots. 
So I guess CNN's trying to tell us that Russia's the only one doing this. CNN, what are you admitting from us? Okay, RT and Sputnik are state propaganda. Okay, yeah, I believe that. But CNN is also state propaganda. It just happens to be what? The, the better state? The one we should listen to? No, actually, I think I'll just form my own opinion in this giant sea of all these shills and all these ideas. Also, they don't really talk much about Share Blue ever in their attempts to influence the election. I mean, it became insufferable after a while because they were so transparent, so obvious, and they didn't even really care that much to put it in an effort to make it look believable. So every time you saw one of these posts, you could say, yeah, it's a shill. And then, of course, the way that they were shilling and their entire PDF of their tactics was leaked online continuously, almost on a weekly basis. And you could just match that up with a number of different posters who were getting paid something like three cents a post in order to be nerd virgins, live in a computer data center, and just keep hitting copy and paste over and over again with these tired, old, broken arguments. Now, does Russia do this too? Well, yes, but everybody's doing it. So, what's your point? We will watch them play both sides. They might go after a Republican uh, person in this room tomorrow, and then they'll switch. It's solely based on what they want to achieve in their own landscape, whatever the Russian foreign policy objectives are. In the first public hearing since the launch of the investigation, senators and witnesses laying out vivid detail and urging lawmakers to look beyond even the cyber arena for evidence of Russian influence and delve into the suspicious deaths of Russian officials. Uh, the other part that I think we should be looking at is follow the trail of dead Russians. Now, I've already been over how CNN doesn't believe this themselves and they think it's a conspiracy theory with no evidence beyond it but I will say this as well CNN is then showing that this one-off comment that this guy makes if you watch the entire thing which is actually posted on CNN's YouTube but if you take a look at that you'll notice that this was sort of a one-off comment he just said this and then he didn't back it up and he moved on now they're using this one little talking point here because they think this is a giant revelation as if to say this one comment is somehow the entirety of the testimony where information about following the bodies in this case will lead to greater and bigger things definitively when in actuality it's just CNN trying to highlight something as if to say well there's probably a lot more here even though no one has been able to provide evidence to do so and while President Trump wasn't the focus of the hearing he and his top associates were rarely far from the minds of the witnesses citing statements made during the campaign he denies the intel from the United States about Russia uh, he claimed that the election could be rigged that was the number one theme pushed by RT Sputnik News white outlets all the way up until the election yeah I wonder where they got that idea from hmm well maybe it was the DNC perhaps ringing an election against Bernie Sanders which if anyone denies that at this point then you're just behind the times and you gotta figure it out on your own if you can't go to WikiLeaks with their 100 percent true proven track record and say that they're actually journalists and read through those emails and then say well you know I don't I don't really believe that Hillary Clinton was was capable and doing all this stuff no it's right there in email form you can see the numerous instances of them doing shady tactics that they're still doing to this day. My last video was how nonchalant and just broken the Democrats are when it comes to things like voter fraud and election fraud. So it's just another piece of sand on a mountain of this type of shit that Democrats have been doing for 50 years at least, probably longer, probably 100 years, probably 200 years at this point. But nothing has ever actually changed. They're still bussing people around. They're still committing mass voter fraud. They're still getting illegals and non-citizens to vote. And they don't care about it. They're doing it out in the open. So when Do Donald Trump says something like, well, the election could potentially be rigged, he's goddamn right. And just because RT and Sputnik pick up on that, like it's some kind of propaganda that they want to push, well, of course it is. But that doesn't make it not true. I would hope that the president is as anxious as we are to get to the bottom of what happened. But I have to say editorially that the president's recent contact with his wild and uncorroborated accusations about wiretapping 
and his inappropriate and unjustified attacks on America's hardworking intelligence professionals does give me grave concern. You know who the CIA and the NSA are wiretapping? Everyone. So I made it two minutes and 30 seconds into this broadcast and had numerous problems with their reporting. There were so many things in this that were just blatantly wrong, omissions, ignoring certain aspects, and just completely re rewriting the truth. To the point where there is no way I could watch CNN on a regular basis and believe any of the things that they're saying. I mean, maybe some people can plug back in and start hate-watching this. But this should be a lesson to anyone at YouTube with this whole YouTube TV thing where they say to themselves, holy shit, people aren't just going to accept it. They're not just going to jump back in. They're not going to start watching CNN once again now that they have access to all this other information. It's just impossible. And I think I've shown that pretty well here in this video. But who knows, maybe this entire experiment is ruined since I'm biased myself. Now that you've watched this, leave a comment yourself and let me know if you think you could go back to TV, if you could go back to watching CNN to get your news on a daily basis. Because I think this stuff is fascinating and it'll be interesting to see what other people think about that. If the speculation that YouTube is somehow going to push this YouTube TV over actual content creation which they've done in the trending tab and there's various things, demonetization and all these other issues. But if they really come to a head and they start pushing out content creators for the likes of ABC, Fox, NBC and all these other dinosaur dying channels, then they will get some money from them. And they have big money on their side. But ultimately, where are the viewers going to go? It probably won't be YouTube. So I'd like to think that they know this or at least they're aware of this, but who actually knows? We'll have to see in the future what they decide to do.